This is Valentine Warner's Scandinavian Supper, and this is a cook-along. I'll be cooking live and um, in real time. It's all quite nerve-wracking, um, but we'll make it. Together, we will make it. Um, cooking with me at home are four competition winners, so they'll be on the screen here, and hopefully we'll all cross the finish line together. Um, so I've got some studio guests here with me today, so let me introduce them. There is a Danish food writer here, a wonderful cook, personal friend of mine, Trina Hanneman. Hi, yes. Trina. Hi. Um, Glad to be thank here. Thank you. It's quite nerve-wracking cooking for you because yeah. you're, a, you're a pro. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we're going to see about that. Our next guest is food adventurer, um, a, an allotment owner, um, and this is the food urchin, yes. Danny. Danny, Danny yes. I ordinarily go by the name of Danny, but you can call me Thurch if you like. Can I call you D Danny? Yeah, you call me Danny then, yeah. Okay, okay. Um, and finally, um, another accomplished cook, a writer of two books. What is your latest? Uh, do Ahead Dinners, that's it. Uh, James Ramsden also has a wonderful um, supper club, pop up supper club, which I actually haven't been to because I can't get there for love or money. For the last few months, I've made a series called Valentine Warner Eats Scandinavia. Um, there was a wolf around at one point where, and I thought for a moment it might be called Scandinavia Eats Valentine Warner, but anyway, it didn't become that. And hopefully you'll want to cook some of the things that um, we made along the way. We have four competition winners um, who are going to be cooking along with me. Each of the winners entered by voting online via the Facebook app on the Good Food website. Um, and there was a competition about which, reci you know, which recipe was wanted, to, um, did people want to cook. Um, They've all been sent the ingredients, so they'll work with me as I go. The dish that was voted for tonight, well, there was a choice. Um, it was a mackerel burger, uh, which I chose to call the Big Mac, um, not a quarter flounder, I might add. Um, um, uh, there was an open sandwich with place and prawns. Now, uh, Trina cooked this for me um, when we were doing the open sandwich program special in Copenhagen. And my goodness me, it was absolutely delicious, but sadly that didn't get voted for. And I think you all know what it's going to be, the famous yes. Swedish meatball. Um, so Swedish meatballs is our winner. That's what we're all going to be cooking. Um, if you've got any questions, again, just to repeat, um, hashtag Eat Scandinavia on Twitter. Right. Okay. So now it's time to cook. Well, Swedish meatballs it is. Um, I'm a bit nervous about this one. I cooked this in Stockholm in a youth hostel meatball off. Um, I'd been around uh, Sweden a bit, eating their meatballs, and I found the sauce a little bit school-like. So I decided to go off-piste, make my own sauce. And um, although I'm calling the Swedish meatballs, it was purely because I was wearing an apron and standing in Stockholm. But I was told that um, I had no right to call them Swedish meatballs because I broke some golden rules. And I'm going to break them again now because the recipe is good. So, and Trina, I'm sure, is going to tick me off because she's, um, you know, Everyone's got a meatball recipe. Yeah, I mean, it is a very Scandinavian thing, and every family have their own recipe, and so there's actually no real truth to this, but we are very excited to see what you are going to come up with. That's very your... generous yes. of you. <laughs> and you can see that people in the kitchen are starting cooking, so... Uh, everyone's going, so one shallot, if you've got small shallots, use six of these. I've got one nice big shallot. Now, I know, Trina, you don't... Um, you don't cook your onions, do you, or your shallots? No, no, I put them in raw, very finely chopped or grated, so they become really mushy. And I've never seen this before, so that's quite exciting, actually. Exciting, great. I'm glad I'm exciting you already, and I'm yeah. only chopping onions. Guys, what do you think, Un you know, cooked or uncooked? I'm, I'm slightly torn because I feel I should bow to the greater knowledge of Trina, but also, um, if you don't chop them fine enough and don't cook the meatballs enough, and you do get a big crunch of raw onion in there, it's quite uh, a shock. And I would say you'd have to cook them for quite a while because I don't like a, a crunchy onion either. So, so guys, um, yeah, I think the onion shallots are the unsung heroes of the kitchen, so don't rush the onion and shallot cooking. Give them time to get nice and soft and tender. But the taste of the onions is a very important part of the meatball. I will <coughs> give you that. Yes, Trina. <laughs> so, it, and um, the whole love that goes into the mixture you're doing right now is also very important. Thank you. And the they're love. all chopping the love, you know. Love is cooking and love goes together. But you know, I'm just also keeping an eye on the, your friends over there. How cooking the friends meatballs. Doing? They're doing really well. They're cooking. They're the looking at us, the lady in the white. Maybe so onions, want, ladies. Anybody wants to ask a question, let us know. Are you all right there? Onions in, in a nice, healthy, yeah. luxurious amount of butter. Don't yeah, be shy yeah. with the butter. No, no, no. It's Winter's coming after all. 
Now, I'm not yeah, actually cooking the potatoes, potatoes today. Yeah. I've got a little helper downstairs, and she's doing me some lovely potatoes, which I'm just simply going to rice onto the plate so they mop up all the sauce. My shallots are on the go. Now, um, what goes in the meatballs? I've got half veal, and, we'll and I've got half pork. If you don't agree with veal, by all manner, you can get lovely British rosé veal, but if you don't agree with veal, then just use beef. And then if you've got beef in the fridge and all the other things, don't go to the supermarket to buy the pork. You can kind of use what you want, but ideally, I like to use half veal, half pork. So that's in there. One egg. My onions, don't forget the onions, just because you're doing something else, which I already have, and they're getting a bit brown, which is very, and very there's bad. There's a very nice smell in here. It's lovely. Lovely already smell. It's browning to come onions through. Is all so spice. Yep. Is that allowed to go? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So two teaspoons of allspice, uh, white pepper, like the stuff you'd find in a cafe and put yeah. on your um, fried egg. Quite a lot of that, a good whack of that. Don't be shy, you've got to taste it after all. Why white pepper instead of black? It's just got that lovely thing that white pepper does that black doesn't. I don't know, you know, that's got that kind of lovely dustiness, if I, you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah. um, a good scratch of nutmeg, which isn't normally in Swedish meatballs, but I like it, so I'm putting in. And don't forget, there's a million mothers in a million different houses who all say that their recipe is the true one. Um, this is my recipe. Some breadcrumbs, which keeps the meatballs really, really lovely and soft, and a splash of milk. Now, get your hands in here. You can mix it with a spoon, but it never does quite as good a job as getting your no, hands in. Would hands you agree to that? Good. No, couldn't agree more. Can't see the pans you're using, ladies, but the cooking no. looks very competent. Yeah. Everyone's concentrating. No, the, at the, the mixture is going well, I can see, and there's over there. Gemma is. Yep, mixture. Hands. That's Get it. your hands yep. in there. Get your hands yeah, in. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah. it. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Don't be afraid. This is the most important tool you have when you're cooking. Onions in. Just put a bit of meat on top so you don't burn your hands on the hot onions. But that's not. Once it's mixed in, it's absolutely fine. Again, really mix properly. It's kind of mixing properly is important. You don't want all the in all spice in one mouthful and all the onion in another, you've just got to make sure that every single mouthful is the glorious sum parts of everything that's meant to be in here. So in nice, little, nice little what's balls, the, ladies. The third ball that size. doesn't sound a bit weird. Look at your friends over there. They are doing the same as you. Every Hooray. Yeah, How, can we rolling. have a look at those meatballs, yeah. please? How big are they? Very nice hand Come on, don't hide them around, under the screen. See. Yeah. A little big. Just pinch a tiny bit off. That's more Norwegian. <laughs> I'd go half. That will make about three. Okay. Where are they? Let's see your... Yeah, now I would say that's a beautiful Norwegian meatball. Here, yeah. have a look at mine. Okay. Just, a so bit too just snap, big. It, snap it in two. Yeah. Just a bit too okay. big. Okay, so I'm melting some butter in here and I'm going to, once it's foaming, don't rush them. If they don't sizzle the minute they hit the pan, then the pan's not ready. We all tend to kind of race and put meat in the pan. It slowly heats up and goes a bit grey and watery. Just kind of wait and then the meatballs will start browning straight away. Sabrina says go for the dill. Go, go for it. <laughs> we asked yes. them about the dill in the sauce and people are... Sabrina. Um, is there some Thanks very yeah. upset um, yeah. sweets? Yeah, no, chocolate? no, I don't know. We don't know. Yeah. Dill, go for the dill. People mm. like the The, the judge in her own right who judges meatballs said her grandmother would turn in her grave. Yeah. What can I say to that? I went very silent. You've got to get a bit of brown on them because it's the brown that takes some yeah. real flavour into the sauce. And what I loved about restaurants in Copenhagen is that when you get your beautiful bread at the beginning of the meal, as well as your butter, you get a little pot of pig fat. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's usually flavoured with rosemary or juniper yeah. or something. Yeah, it's yeah. just the bread in the bread in all three countries was absolutely sensational. Put some flour to... into the pan, about two tablespoons, and it's very important to kind of cook out that dry taste. Now, uh, most of the time, to thicken the sauce um, for Swedish meatballs, corn flour is used, not flour. I'm not mad about corn flour, um, and I just I don't like the consistency really. So I prefer to use um, normal plain flour. What do you think of that? I think this is the way it should be done. There are other ways. I think it's a bit a little bit like cheating. My grandmother taught me doing it like that. The other ways is yeah, it's easier. It's because people don't want to do this the, the beginning part of it where it becomes a little bit lumpy, and there's some work to be done to make sure there's no lumps in there. Okay, so this is beef stock, in case you're wondering. Um, that's about enough. Um, chicken stock's fine. Um, beef stock is, stock is preferable. So a little bit of white wine, not necessary if you don't have it. I just like to, you know, put a little bit in. So about 50 mils of white wine. And just kind of let that bubble away a little bit. 
And weirdly, I know Trina's with me on this, there's a lot of vinegar used in Scandinavian cooking. I think vinegars really make sauces and stews. It gives an edge to something. You don't want it to be sour or make your face pucker, but a little edge from vinegar um, is a good thing. So I'm going to put in a good splash of vinegar. Danish mustard all tastes very similar, but it's quite hard to find in this country. But there is French's hot dog mustard. It's actually pretty similar. So I'm going to put in a big teaspoon of that. It's not a mustard sauce. So go sparingly. You can put it in, but you can't take it out. From Alex Hardy, just wondering where the wine is, not for the meal, but for the floydiness. Um, <laughs> I'm having a, a dry moment in my life, actually. And I'd normally have a glass of wine, especially at home, but I'm not drinking at the moment. Now, there is the sauce. Now, the important thing is to really make the sauce come alive. The meatballs have got to go back in. They're not also totally cooked yet. And I've got to turn down the heat because it's going bonkers. No. Um, when you take your meatballs off the plate, don't throw that in the sink. That's very important that it goes into yeah. your sauce. Oh, Nikki is going back. So... Great. <laughs> Someone's asking if your meatballs are better than um, I a well-known Swedish furniture store. I prefer mine. Yes, most definitely. I, they are, I think you should make your own. That, as Val has shown, they are quite easy They're to make. They're very easy. Yeah, it's, very, not, a, it's easy. not a difficult meal to... Um, have you ever met a child who doesn't like meatballs? I was just trying to rack my brains. No. No. Don't race it, and then your dill can go in. Just keep a little bit back for colour, and the stuff that you put in first will discolour a bit, because it's going to... And one of the really important reasons not to, you know, like, let the sauce boiling away is because it can become bitter. And um, you want this like smooth and nice, I think. That okay. sounds great. Okay. So if your meatballs were nice and brown in the beginning, you only really need to bubble them away gently for about 10 minutes. Okay. Have you, Are they, tasted, have you the tasted the sauce? Have you? Okay, good. So are we going to have uh, some lingonberry sauce with this? I wouldn't dare serve them to you without the lingonberry sauce. If at home, resource is very easy to find. Um, online, there's some kind of shops about the country where you can certainly buy it, but certainly online you'll get lingam resource and lots of choices too. But if you can't get it, um, first port of call, the equivalent, would be probably red currant jelly. If you can't get red currant jelly, things, things are getting a bit tough. Um, cranberry sauce, and then if you can't get either of them, I'd even go as far as to say raspberry jam. But try and get the lingam re, red currant. Cranberry sauce, raspberry jam, last option. But the raspberry really nice jam is with... really weird, though. I have to try that now, because I, I only eat that with the, with the little yeah. Ableski or the donuts for Christmas, you know? But yeah. I'll be open. I'll be open. Be open. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Please. We've got another question from the Twitter sphere from James uh, Clampin, who's saying, uh, mine always fall apart when cooking. How do I keep them together? I think he means me. Really meatball. use your hand. Cook your onion. So if you don't, uh, one problem I find with putting raw onions in is because they're quite hard, they tend to stop the mints really going together. Um, you don't, um, and just really work your hands, work them kind of, I like my meatballs not, you know, quite kind of dense and as they should be. Um, bread crumbs will help in there with a little bit of milk. I'll make it all kind of softer, but just spend time on them. If you just kind of do that and put them down, then just really love each one. Um, we were asked, um, how do you make a vegetarian meatball? Trina replied that you would use um, beets, um, beetroots of some sort. We could even do them with kind of beans, but I'm um, deferring to uh, the Danish Raw lady. Raw shredded beets. To make the balls. Yeah, the, the vegetarian dish. It's looking a little bit watery. Right, um, that's probably too much, stock, um, too much stock and not enough flour. Um, too much stock to flour. So. Um, no, don't start again. What I probably do is um, get another pan, um, get another pan on, and pour off two thirds of the sauce, and just reduce it quite quickly. And the other meatballs are probably nearly cooked now. Or, okay. or serve them in a bowl and go for more of a soupy affair. <laughs> <laughs> I've got my hot potatoes here. I'm going to load up my ricer. Lovely flowery potatoes is what you want. You don't want waxy ones. And you don't need, what I love about this, I was um, in, right up in Karuna in Swedish Lapland and um, I made a stew 
um, we had smoked reindeer heart and mushrooms and cream, and the potatoes were just simply riced onto the edge of the plate. You didn't need the butter and everything. The potatoes were riced on top of the sauce, and it just mopped up all the sauce and lingered on the side. So I'm not going to mash them at all, just straight for a ricer onto the edge of the plate, nothing else. Maybe a little bit of salt on top. So about two thirds of the dill goes into the sauce um, and to cook for about 10 minutes. And then just for colour, I put another little bit on right at the end. Okay. Right, let's turn the best angle around. There is the meatballs with riced potatoes, lingonberry sauce. It's looking pretty good. Guys, is that at all tempting to you? Very much so. 